Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sara Bulfat. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued Edict Number 14 of 2022, appointing the following directors at the Ministry of Interior: Colonel Muhammad Jamaa Ali Dosri, Colonel Muhammad Abdullah Muhammad Al Msallam, Colonel Ali Hamad Ali Al Arifi, Lieutenant Colonel Ibrahim Ahmed Isa Al Hafiz, Lieutenant Colonel Khalid Muhammad Ali Dosri, Lieutenant Colonel Nawaf Naji Fahd Al Hashil. Lieutenant Colonel Fahed Naji Fahed Al Hashil, Lieutenant Colonel Nayib Al Mbarak Ghanim Al Sanad, Lieutenant Colonel Muhammad Ali Muhammad Al Mutawa, Lieutenant Colonel Ahmed Isa Ahmed Al Mahri, Lieutenant Colonel Abdul Rahman Malala Dosri, Lieutenant Colonel Muhammad Eid Mbarak Farhan, Lieutenant Colonel Tawfiq Ibrahim Al Joder, Major Ahmed Abdul Aziz Atiya Tala Al Khalifa, and Major Majid Saeed Abdul Nabi Dhaif. The Minister of Interior shall appoint the aforementioned director in the vacant directorates of the ministry in accordance with the tasks and responsibilities of each directorate, taking into account the qualifications and experience of each of them. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting at Qadabiya Palace. The cabinet noted His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's inauguration of the Royal Guard headquarters, marking the 54th anniversary of Bahrain Defence Force BDF. The cabinet congratulated His Majesty and members of the BDF and the Royal Guard on this occasion and commended the address given by His Majesty during the ceremony, which noted the continual progress and prosperity of the BDF which has led to the BDF becoming a peacekeeping force in the region and a force for national prosperity and growth. The cabinet highlighted the importance of the 7th edition of the International Maritime Exercise, part of which was witnessed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. The cabinet commended the role of such exercises in promoting international joint action when confronting the challenges that limit freedom of navigation and to maintain the free flow of maritime trade across the region and the world. The cabinet expressed gratitude to the BDF, the U.S. Naval Forces Central Command, the U.S. Fifth Fleet, the Combined Maritime Forces, as well as all allies and participating countries in this important joint international maritime exercise. After reviewing a memorandum submitted by the Minister of Interior, the cabinet announced the launch of the Golden Residency Visa, part of a series of economic initiatives within the Economic Recovery Plan. The visa will contribute to enhance the competitiveness of the Kingdom supporting development paths across various economic investments and service sectors, attracting talent and opening the opportunity to obtain and benefit from permanent residency in Bahrain. The Cabinet welcomed the Bahrain International Airport's attainment of a five-star rating from the International Air Transport Rating Organization, Skytrax. The rating is based on the quality of services related to departures, arrivals and transit flights, which include airport facilities, customer services, security, passport, stores and service facilities. In this regard, the Cabinet congratulated the Ministry of Transportation and Telecommunications and the Bahrain Airport Company on this achievement. The Cabinet discussed and approved a number of memorandums during the meeting with the following outcomes. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding an MOU between the Ministry of Interior and the Denver Police Department in the United States. The MOU aims to enhance bilateral security cooperation and exchange information, expertise and training in the field of community policing. The Cabinet reviewed the following topics. A memorandum by the Ministry of Interior on the population census of the Kingdom of for the year 2021, which revealed that the population of Bahrain reached an approximate 1,504,365 people by mid-2021. Memorandum by the Minister of Finance and National Economy on Key Economic Indicators for the year 2021, which revealed an improvement in the performance of most of the economic indicators compared to 2020, while some indicators exceeded pre-pandemic levels. A memorandum by the Minister of Labour and Social Development following efforts since January in regards to the amendment of social insurance payments and financial support for low-income individuals. This is in accordance with the amendment to the Social Insurance Law and Cabinet decision following an agreement with the Legislative Authority. The Cabinet then took note of ministerial reports from the Minister of Foreign Affairs regarding the outcomes of the visit of the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Turkey. 
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the Auditor General of the National Audit Office, the NAO, Sheikh Ahmed bin Hamad Al Khalifa, who presented a forensic audit report on non compliance within the Ministry of Works, Municipalities Affairs and Urban Planning at Qadabiya Palace. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister reviewed the forensic audit report submitted by the NAO's Auditor General and stressed the importance of further strengthening accountability and responsibility across government work streams. His Royal Highness additionally noted the importance of upholding the principles of integrity and professionalism across the public sector to preserve public funds. He highlighted NAO's role in promoting best practice and safeguarding public funds. His Royal Highness then directed the non-compliances for onward referral to the public prosecution to take the necessary action needed in the public interest. He further directed to intensify forensic audit reports and internal auditing within government government to ensure the integrity of public sector agencies and to safeguard public funds. For his part, Sheikh Ahmed bin Mohammed expressed gratitude for the opportunity to meet with His Royal Highness and commended his support to the NAO to safeguard public funds. The Deputy Prime Minister Jawad Salem al arayat the Minister of Interior General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah al-Khalifa and the Minister of Finance and National Economy Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa al-Khalifa also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received a delegation from the United States Atlantic Council headed by Vice Admiral John Miller at Qadabiya Palace. His Royal Highness emphasized that ensuring peace and stability in the Arabian Gulf is a priority given the region's strategic and logistical importance to international security. He acknowledged the contribution of Bahrain's allies towards this end. His Royal Highness highlighted that strength and depth of strategic relations between Bahrain and the U.S. and the importance of further developing ties to benefit both countries and their people. He noted the importance of the work conducted by international research centers, commending the Gulf Security Task Force for the insights and solutions they provide for regional challenges. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister concluded by noting that efforts to maintain international safety and security should be enhanced to benefit global development. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, affirmed that the achievements made in the equestrian sports and international participations reflect the support and care of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to this sport. His Highness praised the win of Victoria's team in UK and pointed out that this win affirms the status of Bahrain in this sport on the global level. His Highness affirmed his keenness to continue supporting the team to make further accomplishments. His Highness hailed the efforts of coach Roger Werner and rider Jack in making this achievement, which will be a motivator to continue the series of successes. The Minister of Works, Municipalities, Affairs and Urban Planning, Assam Khalaf, participated in the 36th session of the FAO Regional Conference for the Near East, NERC 36. The Minister said that the conference seeks to transform agricultural and food systems to achieve sustainable development goals in the Near East and North Africa. It also seeks to mainstream a gender equality perspective in food systems and rural transformation of youth employment and income, promote a healthy diet and divert towards sustainable recovery and work in climate change, science and innovation. Minister Khalaf stressed the importance of regional cooperation in order to enhance food security, eradicate hunger and combat climate change. The Board of Directors of Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority, headed by the Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism and Chairman of the Board of Directors of the PTEA, Zayed Zayani, approved the budget for the current year. The detailed plan for, marking, for marketing the Kingdom of Bahrain in tourism and placing it on the regional and international tourism map was presented through the implementation of immediate initiatives, including signing agreements with 37 companies and regional and international tourism offices with the aim of enhancing access to tourism markets and attracting regional and international tourists. The authority also revealed new projects that it will pl implement for the first time in the coming month. 
The Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Zaid Zayani, paid a visit to the new Bahrain Institute of Banking and Finance, BIBF, premises in Bahrain Bay in Manama, where he was received by BIBF Director General Dr. Ahmed Abdul Hamid Sheikh. Zayani hailed the advanced level of BIBF and its programs that are in line with the strategy aimed to develop the financial and economic sector towards achieving the goals and visions of the wide-ranging development process led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa with the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. Democracy was an important element for the issuance of the National Action Charter through the participation of the people of Bahrain in the process of voting. The National Action Charter is a solid base on which many of the kingdom's achievements were founded, and democracy was an important element in the issuance of the charter, which affirms that it is the kingdom's approach that was chosen by the people and the leadership. The National Action Charter protects personal freedoms and equality, as well as the freedoms of belief and expression. The civil society constitutes an important element emphasized by the Charter to strengthen democracy, as the reform project of His Majesty the King was the supporter and founder of a modern civil society. Bahrain devoted considerable attention to civil society for its role in democratic nurturing. Civil society's institutions entrenched the democratic trend of citizens through harnessing citizens' expression of opinion and emphasizing the importance of consensus as a mechanism to reach compromises with a focus on the value of participation in public life and social solidarity that contribute to the advancement of societies. The parliamentary and municipal elections reflect the reality of democratic practice in the kingdom, where the legislative authority, with its oversight and legislative roles, provided a democratic voice for all citizens. The expansion of the application of the alternative sentencing and alternative measures and the start of the implementation of the Open Prisons Program come in the context of continuing the development of the legislative system in a way that supports the comprehensive development process led by His Majesty the King. More in this report. The Kingdom of Bahrain is moving forward in implementing the directors of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, concerned with developing the legislative and humanitarian systems in a way that enhances the human rights frameworks for all members of society. The expansion of the application of the alternative sentencing and alternative measures and the start of the open prisons program are important in safeguarding and protecting human rights at various levels. These human rights features are to devote and consolidate these human values since the launch of the National Action Charter, which represents a continuation of the approach of the Kingdom of Bahrain and its commitment to an approach based on the care for human rights. The directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa come to be integrated with the royal vision of His Majesty the King, which is concerned with implementing the Ministry of Interior with its highest professional capabilities in managing correctional institutions in the Kingdom of Bahrain. And to speak more about this, we are joined over the phone by the Deputy of the Ombudsman Office, Ms. Ghada Hamid. Hello, Ms. Ghada. It's good to have you here with us tonight. Can you tell us about the importance of the alternative sentences and open prisons program that are being implemented in the Kingdom of Bahrain? Uh, hello. Hi to everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to take this uh, opportunity to thank you for giving us this opportunity to talk about the alternative sentences. Uh, as an essential part of its commitment to the reform project and royal vision of His Majesty Sheikh Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the King of Bahrain, uh, which aims and based on the development, uh, promotion and enhancement of different fields, including the human rights. In fact, the Kingdom of Bahrain has taken many serious and tangible steps in this regard. The Kingdom of Bahrain has formed a model of integrity and transparency. Uh, this was by establishing different mechanisms through its, the legislative authorities, which complete the human rights system by affirming the independence, uh, credibility, and impartiality of the national human rights institutions in accordance with first principles. Establishing the Independent Ombudsman Office for Minister of Interior, uh, the Prisoner One and Detainees Rights Commission, and uh, finally the Special Investigation Unit in the Public Prosecution. In fact, one of the most important projects that was implemented uh, according to Law Number 18 for the year 2017, and according to His Royal Highness Sheikh Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister directions to expand the application of the alternative sentences 
uh, to allow the largest number of the prisoners to benefit from such law. The Kingdom of Bahrain has provided the prisoners and convicted persons with uh, the opportunity to correct their mistakes and return back to them and be involved in their society through the adoption and application of the alternative sentences that create a new types of punishment alternatives to those who were convicted. Uh, in fact, the Independent Ombudsman Office would affirm its full support to it as it believes that the alternative sentence is a qualitative leap to the field of protection and the promotion of the human rights, and one of the most advanced achievements uh, to the Kingdom of Bahrain, as it contributes maintaining community and family stability, uh, pushing the convicted persons to abandon legally criminal acts and never repeat it in the near future, uh, qualify the convicted to regain their position in the society, uh, providing them with different skills. Uh, regarding the open prisons, uh, which is considered, uh, in fact, as one of the alternative sentences that can be provided to the prisoners, uh, in fact, this approach that is adopted and fully supported by His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, and directly followed up and supervised by His Excellency, uh, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al-Khalifa, the Minister of Interior, to be implemented as soon as possible, as it was approved that it reinforces the importance for um, of the importance of self-education, uh, reducing the crime rate, reducing the pressure on the correction centers, maintaining a balance in terms uh, of services provided to the prisoners, uh, the application of the criminal justice law, and as an independent ombudsman office, it will continue to be its role uh, by, as a monitoring body of all uh, the prisons and correction centers as it receives any complaints or assistance requests from the prisoners. Well, Deputy of the Ombudsman Office, Ms. Ghadi Hamid, thank you very much for joining us. Bahrain Real Estate Investment Company Idama and Bahrain Mumtalakat Holding Company announced that the general master plan for the 1.3 million square meter mixed-use mega-project Bilaj al Jazair development has been approved by Bahrain's Higher Urban Planning Committee, chaired by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. Idama Chairman Khalid Ramehi affirmed that the approved general master plan is designed to achieve a balance between economic and social development and environmental sustainability in line with the Kingdom's commitment to bring a carbon emission to net zero by 2060. He stated that the mixed-use coastal city will incorporate green and clean technologies to purify the air and reduce temperatures as well as shaded walkways near key facilities in to encourage walking and minimize the use of cars.